beyond the fairway man welcome in welcome to my living room i got will lowry co-homie always with me man it's we're gonna get to all the stuff we're gonna get to will but i know it's a little different today yeah i mean i'm used to talking to you in my studio now i'm talking to you in front of a thousand people on a love seat okay that's I, i'm not I, it's, it's I a little it's a little a little weird a little weird, it is how, weird however it's a little weird however this is our first step to getting to connecticut <laughs> yeah they gonna let us <laughs> hey coming up on today's episode uh, nick baumgartner u.s olympic team gold medalist in the uh snowboard supercross we'll have fun talking to him we're gonna get to that but before that we had rbc over the weekend and we'll i think the story of the week yes jordan spieth won i get it but morgan hoffman's back in the ropes absolutely absolutely I, I like missed him and he came back with like the man bun he's been doing holistic medicine i'm not going to really get into what some of the things are that he's been doing because you might want to read that on your own but he, he played golf he missed the cut but he was back yeah yeah N no offense to jordan with all due respect yeah jordan was not the winner in my eyes this week oh wow not yeah. at all. Well, you Morgan, we didn't, we didn't win the money that Jordan won. So, he, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, I guess. But still, he didn't win any money. But you know, coming back from, you know, uh, his his illness and that he's that he's on the road to recovery uh, from muscular dy dystrophy. Did that's not that's right? as close as you'll get. As so close I'm, as close I'm gonna get this morning yeah, no, on this couch that. with you. <laughs> as close as you'll get. I'm cool with that. I'm good with that. But no, it's good to see. Now it's funny. I want to like bait you in. Like you know, we had two comebacks two weeks in a row on, on the PGA Tour. <laughs> it's like Morgan. I hate that he's, he's back, he's, but he was super he's overshadowed. Overshadowed. <laughs> like uh, Morgan back. Ah, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he's back. All that. But uh, but think about it though. You know, one of the things about Morgan, what I really appreciate is I, I feel like he didn't lose too much of a beat. I mean, I know he missed a cut. Yeah. But it it was it was it was he had integrity to his golf ball. Yeah. No, it flew with a purpose. Yeah. But he better hurry up, though, because he only got two more starts to try to secure his status moving forward. So, Morgan, we wish you the best. But I'll tell you somebody who was kind of back, if you will, because last year he finished second, and then this year he came back and finished third. Harold Varner thought he could pull it out One stroke, on yeah. Sunday. He played the final round with Shane Lowry, and then it was kind of like, Harold, when are you going to break through, man? I, 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 it's, it's, Harold, it's coming. We, Harold, want, we it, want it. It's coming. And it's so funny. You know, Doug, you and I are here at the uh, APGA Tour event this week. No, we're at the crib right now. Well, we're at the crib. But <laughs> that's, that's the only reason we're in this makeshift studio. Um, it's messed up. Uh, you know, that was a talk of the practice round. You know, we're all, you know, watching the scores of, of uh, Harold and where is he now? You know, we saw where he slipped a little bit in the back nine. Then we saw where he fought back. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you, that we were not paying attention to our, our breaks and our reads and our uh, yeah, chipping yeah. spot. Nah, we, we, we had a phone in our back pocket, we chipped the ball, and then we're looking at the scores. Oh, I get it. No, that, that, that makes sense to me. Like, you, you want him to win. Like, when he made that putt over in Saudi to win, the, I mean, I, I jumped through the screen. It was like 4 o'clock in the morning. But, Doug, did you not feel I that? I was so excited. But did, did you not feel that something like that may happen again? I thought there could be some magic uh, for Harold, but he's, look, he shot a final round 70, which is one under out there. Only, look, you shoot 68, you win. Yeah. I know, it's easier said than done. We're talking about Sunday yeah. on the PGA Tour. It's Easter. Like, it's a lot going on. He, you know, Harold is the new Boo Weekly at, at, that, at that place. Because every time Boo... But Boo won. Ooh, see, that's your boy. But Boo... That, that's but, your boy. That's, <laughs> see, I wasn't even trying to go there. I was just saying that you always show up, Harold, at that particular I, event, I'm trying but to understand had, the analogy had, and comparison had, because every time Boo tees it up at uh, at, at RBC Her RBC Heritage, he shows up. He's top five, and as of right now, Harold has always placed you know pretty high at that at that, pretty, at that event. Oh, so okay. huh? so he's like Boo Weekly ish. I don't know why he threw the salt saying you never won. It's not that. That's how never, you do. That's how you do, dog. He's been like that since Bill Dickey. That's, just, just throwing salt. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. What I said was Boo has won. Harold has not won, and you compare the two together. That's it. I just asked him a question. See, this is don't try, Nick, don't try to say this. No, no, no. Let's go ahead and get to Nick, man. I'm already done with you today, man. Nick Baumgartner, get in here, boy. It's time to go beyond the fairway. Presented by Genesis. Olympian. Beyond the Fairway podcast welcomes in Mr. Nick Baumgartner, Olympic gold medalist. Where you know, Nick, how does it feel like just to have a goal? You know when when they when they when they had the ceremony and you, you finally got that that piece of bling that little flavor flavor on your chest how was that man it's an unbelievable feeling for me it's been a 16 year journey to try to get that medal so it just it means a lot 
And then a lot of people always ask me about hiding it and keeping it safe. And I <gasps> very seldom is it, in, uh, uh, seldom uh, is it uh, in this box. Usually it's right here in my pocket. <laughs> and the reason being is when I hand this to somebody and they get to feel the weight of it in their hands, um, you can't replicate that. And for them to hold it and to feel it, uh, the inspiration that that gives them, I mean, it's such a cool thing. It, it just does people a lot better being out there and then being able to touch it and see it rather than me hiding it and keeping it safe. So it's got some dings, some bangs. She's all beat up. Yeah, and got some character I'm, to it. Yeah, I got some character. By the time I'm done with it, it's going to have a lot of character. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, Nick, we're obviously going to go back to the gold medal portion. But, I mean, Nick, you know, you're a snowboarder. You're going down hills upward to 65 miles per hour. You're also, you know, in stock, uh, stock truck racing. I mean, I, you're on a golf show, but is golf – dangerous enough for you to play <laughs> well, if they let me drive the golf cart it surely is but um <laughs> but you need to have some things and my life is so crazy and so wild i need to have those things to pull me back and to allow me to escape those moments um and uh golf is a way i do that i, I have this new uh fun thing that i've been doing um uh, an electric hydrofoil. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. I find these fun ways and these fun activities to just get my head away from the competition. I know that people like to compete heavy in golf. For me, golf is different. It's a way for me to get out there and relax and enjoy and just have a good time with my boys. Man, Doug, I mean, Doug, I think he actually has to hit out of an alligator's mouth to have fun. I, it seems like, like it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, the, 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 you're, you're not short of, of adrenaline uh, activities. And, and that's another thing. Like, how is golf even, like, how does it keep your attention long enough? Because you're so used to, you know, these, these thrills in competing. Well, a lot of the sports that I've done in my life, I've been fortunate and been good at, right? And then you find golf, which is a very humbling sport, and it brings you back. And for me, I'm not the best golfer. Um, I don't take it as serious as some, but it's a great way for me to get out there and enjoy good times with my friends and, and not always have to be so heavy in the competition. Although some of my friends, while I'm with them, are ready to compete and get after it. But for me, it's about having a few good shots where I'm like, man, you know what? You talking really about alcohol? No, it's golf. Oh, my bad. I forgot what we were. It's a golf podcast. All right, guys. Yeah, so it's just about having those good, a couple good shots around that make me think, well, you know what? With a little work, I could be good at this, but I don't know you, if that day will ever come. You, you know what, Nick? You come across as a guy who does not hesitate to flex <laughs> when need to. So, I, you know, I don't know. Is there ever a point to where you'll use your gold medal to be a ball marker, so to speak? <laughs> no, I don't think, I think it, it's just, it, it's worth more if you don't do that. And it's just kind okay. of fun okay. conversation. If I throw it out there, I've taken all the coolness away from it. And now I'm just. I, no, I think that would be one of the coolest flexes in, in the world. It's like, hey, um, Nick, can you mark your ball? And it's like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to move that like six to the left, Will, because it's, it's in the way. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so look, listen, I want to I want to go back though because Nick, we you're you're an Olympian, like a four time Olympian in 10, 14, 18, and twenty two. I want to talk about the the preparation, the day to day preparation that it takes to be an Olympian because and and I'm asking because I think golfers can take something away from from some of the dedication, but it's not without its challenges. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, for me to be able to go out there, and especially as I age, it takes much more. Every year that I, that I continue to compete, I find out it takes more and more for me to be able to stay relevant in the sport that is dominated by youth, as they say. Um, so th this past offseason, I never spent so much time training, working. I mean, I was living out of a van so that I could be closer to my gym, the gym that I train at. I live in the upper peninsula of Michigan and we lack a few resources and we only have one sports specific gym that that can give me the training that I need here and push me to the level that I need to. And uh, it's an hour and a half away from where I live. So I spend my time in my van. Um, I, I go up every Tuesday and every Thursday. I drive an hour and a half to work out. I do my workout at the gym. I eat at the gym. I go straight from my workout to the bike trails. I pedal up the hill, probably do four or five laps up this steep hill so that I can ride the jump trails down. So, because for me, mountain biking is the, the best cross training for me. It's very close to what I do. 
I can look ahead and go as fast as I can, and I can use my peripheral vision to read the terrain in front of me. And then if Damn. I have a, a, a friend that will ride with me, they hate it because I'm right on their back tire trying to look through them to um, – to make it as close to what I do on the snowboard as I can. So, but, um, but, but I have so to ask. I, I, we got we got to get him. Will we got to? He said he said his, he trains in the van. Is your gym by the river? That's all I have to ask. No, no. But um, sometimes <laughs> I park it by the river. Sometimes I park it in the parking lot. <laughs> I park it wherever I can, where I don't have to pay a lot of money, and the cops don't kick me out at twelve. One in the morning, which has happened. That's some mini tour yeah. stuff, Will. You, you know, you know when it, it exactly, Doug. You know when it comes to the mini tours. You know, Doug and I, we have lived out of our car for multiple events put my across the, in the street. Don't put my business across in the, the country. <laughs> I had an Astro van where I was living out of. Ooh, but that's a good one. <laughs> but the thing was, you know, as a, as a competitor, you know, both Doug and I and yourself, you know, what did that do for you? to build your character, to build, uh, I guess, understanding what makes you tick in that space to be an ultimate competitor in this space. I think it's just any, I've always looked at it as anyone can do it the easy way, but it takes someone special to be able to do it when the odds are stacked against you. And for me, it's just, it's what I had to do. So when you have to fight and you have to make those sacrifices, when you get there, it makes it so much sweeter and so much better when you've worked for it, when you fought for your opportunities, no one gave, me an opportunity to go be a professional snowboarder. I'm from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan where there aren't any professional snowboarders. So I didn't know how to get into it. I didn't have a mentor. I just went online, I found an event and I drove back then I was driving a, a little Mitsubishi Eclipse and I drove that thing all over the country, sleeping in parking lots <laughs> until, until I got my break. And then um, and, and it's still been uh, lots of sacrifice in the way, but um, we do what we gotta do. And when you have to fight for it, man, does it make it sweeter. So uh, interesting. So what would your advice be to like a mini tour player or, or a person that's, that plays golf? Well, granted, you just can't like show up and play golf and, at the highest level. You can't do that. Not, I'm not saying you can, I'm not saying you can snowboard like that either. But my, my, my question is, though, the the stick to itness, right, that you kind of exhibited. You you hit a Google search and then you went off to figure out how to how to snowboard cross. But when it comes to golfers, golfers that that need money, they need finances, but they have the talent. What's kind of your advice to to those folks that that can do it? They just don't have a, really the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, it's just about not quitting and not giving up on yourself. We all have to fight through adversity to get what we want. Some of us more than others, but all those failures and all those times where you can't get it done, man, it, it's what makes you stronger and makes you better and further prepares you to succeed. So when that opportunity does prevent it or present itself where you have that chance to get on that tour, you're just so much more ready for it. And you're so mm -hmm. much ready for the stress, the pressure and all that stuff because you've had to fight to get there. It's when it's easy and you go there and then and then you can't capitalize on the opportunity because you're not ready for it. And mm. It's by well, fighting that you get ready. So, you know, I wanna talk about, you know, even, you know, being prepared and being ready. So, you know, we're in our 40s now. You know, I'm not 40. And, well, I, I'm getting oh. closer. I'm getting closer to 40. And Doug, Will, you only you're an hour. You're an you're, hour older than me. That's what I'm saying. So you're right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> but Easy. you know, but but that that recovery process, you know, at that age, what type of affirmations are you giving? Are you telling yourself to probably to keep your competitiveness among, amongst the uh, above the young the young kids? Well, I guess for me, it goes back to just I know I have an expiration date at what I'm doing. And it Dang. is coming sooner than theirs. And that's what keeps my fire lit. Mm. Until that time comes, you're gonna, I'm going to fight as hard as I possibly can to be as successful as I can in this because the end's coming. Like it or not, it's coming for us all. Aging Damn. comes for us. But for me, until that day comes, you better watch out because I'm keeping full speed ahead. And I'm going to try to be as successful as I can at this sport and do what I can. It's like... Um, Tom Brady, look at that guy. It, he's doing at 45 in the NFL. Uh, well, it's crazy. Well, Tom Brady's bored. I think yeah, that's a whole yeah. different scenario. And, he's and, not. And, and Tom Brady don't have no. Tom Brady don't have no damn gold medal either. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel like Tom Brady's bored. Like, uh, I'll play again. He's gonna miss the camaraderie, etc. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, and I'm gonna put it in term, in, in, in kind of my own terms. So, when I had a son, I feel like sport golf. I won't say it got easier, 
but it, it it became more enjoyable and I started to play better because I had to you know set an example etc you have a 17 year old son you live in your car four days a week what what kind of what do you hope to teach him not even teach what do you hope that he he learns he learns from you by seeing his pops just grind well the big thing is is as a kid I don't think you listen to your parents so me telling him isn't going to do a thing but me going out there and leading by example and fighting through all this adversity, he's been there. Not only have I made sacrifices to make this work, but he's made sacrifices, allowing me to go and travel the world. And um, just by him seeing all that happen, he's seen me continue to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and just falling short again and again mm. and again. And then I kept at it. And then to have this all come together and to go to my fourth Olympics at 40 years old, when everyone counted me out, I mean, so many people counted me out, and I understand. I don't hold them hold that against them, and I'm glad they did because that's what pushed mm. me to do this. I love then that. to come home and to bring this gold medal home. Which one? Them, okay. <laughs> and and for him to see that come full circle, I can't imagine that that doesn't uh, that doesn't teach him the lesson I've been trying to teach. Him. But you know, even during the times the in between period. You know, how did you manage to keep your spirits high in front of your son so he doesn't, you know, have the opportunity to see you down, to see you, you know, the weight of the world on your shoulders? Like, how, you let him see you down. Do, no, yeah, exactly. I right. don't see that. That's all part of the game. If, if he doesn't see those failures and that, that devastation, then when maybe Look. that happens to him, he gives up, right? Mm. By seeing that and then, all right, well, I don't know how dad picked himself up from this and kept going, but he's gonna he's seen that, so now he's going to be able to, when that hurdle comes, he's going to jump right over it. And so, I are, that. so are, <laughs> oh, nice. I love the pun right there. Yeah. <laughs> the analogy. All right, so, so competing in the Olympic Games at the age of forty-four in twenty twenty-six is not out of the question. Absolutely not. I mean, obviously, at forty years old, four years from now, a lot can happen. That's like dog years we're talking, right? So, uh, just making me feel happen. older and older, Nick. This is bull. Man, you can make me feel <laughs> because it, 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 what makes it worse is that you know he's talking about recovery and you know being in shape. When I walk to the mailbox in the wrong shoes, it takes a lot for me to recover. So, <laughs> so I just feel worse and worse because I'm younger than him. Okay, so I take a sauna every night. Every night I'm outside firing up the sauna. I take a sauna. I have a foam roller. I have a percussion massager. I use every single tool to make sure that my body can handle. Um, the stress that I'm putting on it. So I'm definitely, it's not just happening because I'm this some phenom and some elite athlete. I work as hard as I can at the recovery, as hard as I do in the, the training, I, I put into my recovery as well. Well, let me ask you this question because I, I think it's, it's so important at, at this era. I feel like a lot of athletes or players, whatever sport they're in, uh, we hear you know mental health, mental awareness. It's 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 kind of a topic with Naomi Osaka from Nelly Corda, Matt Wolf in the game of golf. Um, when we're talking about mental health and balance, work life balance, etc., how what is the secret? Or, or what have you had to battle with or through regarding just mental health, and and how have you either used that to kind of push you forward? Well, it's just the stress and the pressure that everyone puts on you, that everything comes with the sport. It's imperative that you find whatever that activity is that can get you away from it. For me, again, it's my mountain bike. It's my hydrofoil. It's going out golfing with the boys. It's doing activities like this that get me away and allow me to clear my mind. If you can't clear that mind and you keep all those problems on your head, it's definitely going to get rowdy and it's going to be very tough for you. So um, I just say find something, whatever that sport may be, whatever that activity may be, go find it, do it, and fully submerge yourself into that so that you can clear everything and then go back 100%. And so you're never too old to go get what you want out of life either, correct? Like, you, it doesn't, there's no age uh, limit. I don't think he's, I don't think I Nick's sure old. hope that my story has proven that it doesn't matter, one, where you come from. I'm from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. My ski hill is less than 500 feet tall. Um, I compete against kids from all over the world, from the wow. Swiss Alps, the Austrian Alps, from the Italian Dolomites, from the Rockies, from all over. And the gold medal came back to the Upper Peninsula a five-foot mm. bump <laughs> at 40 years old. I beat a kid. The kid I passed in the finals um, was 20 years old, half my age, and I was able to beat him. And I really hope that my story can inspire people 
to go out there. You're never too old. It doesn't matter where you come from. As long as you want it and you're willing to put in the work and fight through the adversity, it's possible. And and they don't have the they don't have the uh, the, the the makeshift uh, uh, practice area that you have in your backyard or the side of your house or the front of your house, side of your house. No. So, and, and that's, and that again goes back to the fact that it was either I could believe the excuse that, Oh, well, I don't have anywhere where I can train snowboard cross, or mm. I could spend 30 hours with a snowblower and a shovel and I could build my own. And when I step out of my house in the winter, I do 10 laps around that thing and it completely destroys me, but I have that. And it's not all about, it's not all about having that place to train. It's about the 30 hours that I put in smiling like an eight-year-old kid building a snow fort. It's for my mental game. I'm not worried about the stress <laughs> and the pressure of getting that gold medal at the Olympics because I'm giggling as people drive by wondering, what in the heck is this kid doing? And I'm out there playing like I'm building a fort. It just so happens that when I'm done, I have a wonderful training facility and and now those people that drive by aren't wondering what he's nah, doing. No, he's grinding exactly. now. He, he's working. He's working now. Yeah. <laughs> but he, go ahead, Doug. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm trying to understand this golf situation because you do live in the UP, which means your your whole golf season is like an hour and a half, two hours long. You you've got to train. You've got to recover. You got to be a dad. How? Let's get into it. How, what is the status of your golf game? So I do a men's league every Wednesday. It, it is fortunate. Though. So I'm a concrete construction worker. That's how I fund we, my professional snow. We saw right? that. I, I saw that. So I do that. And the guy that mentors me in that actually um, owns a golf course here in my county. So I go out there and, and every Wednesday we go and we golf. And uh, some years I get good. Some years I get uh, not as good. And uh, it's, it's just an awesome way to get out and, and, and have some fun with the boys. Um, they take it a lot more serious than I do because I'm using it for a different tool. I'm using it to get my mind away from the com competing of the snowboarding. But um, but I but love you, it, man. But you still didn't tell us the status of your game. I want to know where you are right now. Like, right now, we go out he just want He just want to know, are you shooting in the 40s? Ha! Ah, just are kidding. And, uh, no. <laughs> but, or are you, shoot, are you yeah, shooting? I mean, I, I can from time to time, but I wouldn't say – I would say I'm more closer to your 50s. Okay, right. and not, and not okay. Yeah. there you go. It, but he enjoys it. That's yeah. all that matters but to me. By the end of the summer, I'm I'm golfing pretty good. And, and every once in a while, you might go, whoa, this guy's a golfer. So, I have a pretty decent swing. It looks good. It just doesn't always go where it's supposed to. Like, it's not <laughs> hey, hey, Wills Nick. Wills is the opposite. Hey. Wills is the opposite. <laughs> so, Nick, like, are you, are you at a point now to where um, – I have to go play some different courses. I would love to see this particular course. I want to go travel here, ex experience this course. Are you there in the game of golf yet? I mean, I do love to see, um, we have some beautiful courses up here. I do like the view of any, anytime I can get out in nature and see more beautiful things while I'm doing the stuff that I love to do, it is better. But, um, but I'm fine with just going out wherever we go. As long as the boys are there and we're being derelicts and we're having a good time, then I'm into it. All right, well, well, Nick. Before we let you get out of here, I just I got I got one more thing for you because, you know, as parents, you know, I feel like you have a a, a, a an adult child. I have a baby, baby. Like yeah. you have a seventeen year old son, and I'm sure at some point in life you've embarrassed him, you've made him proud, you've built him up, you let him down, you've ridden the roller coaster. And I'm and I'm saying all this to say, you are gonna give the commencement speech at your son's graduation. Now, that can be taken as two, th two ways. My dad's cool as hell, or here he comes to embarrass me one more damn time in front of my friends before I get out of school. My, what's, what's the attitude there as you get prepared for this commencement speech? And, well, what, kind, and what kind of dad jokes, too, before you go? <laughs> well, it's just crazy for me to be, one, to, be a, um, to have that adult child that you speak of, and then to be asked by him and his friends. Oh, he asked you. Okay, that's a different situation. Oh, yeah, okay, his, nice. his whole class approached me before they approached um, the school and asked me if I would do this. And as a parent, it is pretty cool to be asked to do the commencement speech. Hell I yeah. Mean, kids don't want to listen to their parents, but the fact that I've somehow with my career and this gold medal, I have tricked the system that <laughs> want to hang out with me. It's an honor and it's a privilege. And um, I don't know that I'll embarrass them too much. I just hope that I can, somehow reach these kids so that they they actually listen because i know the lessons that i'm trying to teach these kids i was taught by somebody 
-hmm. I just didn't listen. And uh, somewhere along the line, it stuck. But I'm hoping with my different angle at all this parenting that these kids will listen to me and I can help make them not have to learn something the hard way. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. I, I, no, say I, I think I think living life with with no re regrets is probably one of the uh, the main things that they you know, get from that. Yeah. Um, sure. So we, sure. we 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 hear that uh, you are a pretty good jokester when it comes to dad jokes. Dad jokes. All right, so uh, you know, Doug's is pretty good at himself. I, I'm a dad. Can we can can we go back and forth? Doug, when's can the door we... not a door? I, I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. When's a door not a door? I have no idea. When it's a jar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doug, go ahead, Doug. Get, get, go get I one. I got one more for you. When, why does a chicken coop have two doors? I don't know. I'm not sure. Four doors, it'd be a sedan. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, he's killing you right now. This Bro, is a I'm not joke a about it. Joke guy. All right, well, oh, let me jump right, in the comment. Let me jump in the comment. Okay, go what ahead, you, Doug. What do you call a deer with no eyes? Oh God, that's the book. See, he <laughs> didn't know. You were gonna use it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, hey no, man, it's no. only one in the game, right, man. I'm right, on the spot. We got the hold red on, light I got, on, man. I got one. I got one. Why did the turtle cross the road? Go ahead, oh. Will. Just for the shell of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a dad joke. That's just a remedial. What's that one? You go fishing just for the halibut? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not good on that. But. Hey, that's a good one, though, actually. I, I like that one, Nick. I like that one. All right, Nick, before we get you out of here, we got to send you out the only way that we know how. We call it Rap Foursome right here and Beyond the Fairway Podcast. You are going to go play golf with four rappers. It's a five ball. You, four rappers, dead or alive, doesn't matter. If they play golf or they don't play golf, doesn't matter. I just need to know who you pulling up to the golf course with. Um... Notorious B.I.G. That's probably my first one. Let's get um, it. Snoop, because I think that would be fun. <laughs> that would be. We're going to get Snoop. No, Eminem, I'm... he's a Michigan boy, so bring him up. What else we got? You need Uno Mas. Uh-oh. Oh, man. How about all of N.W.A.? <laughs> oh, nice. All of them. All right, I can dig it. <laughs> they gonna need a tea time though. They gonna need another tea time. You know, and, and, and a little more security. <laughs> and, right. And you gotta make sure they say NWA. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta just, <laughs> just do that the right way. Hey, Nick, look, you are an inspiration, no question. Thank you for the grind that you possess. Thank you Absolutely. for showing the world, like, hey, what it's like to just keep going and and what tenacity look feels like i mean i feel like you are the definition of tenacity and we appreciate you coming in here going beyond the fairway with will lowry and myself man until next time let's tee it up but oh, i appreciate you guys thank you for having me this is awesome you guys are the best and uh <laughs> yeah man keep on keeping on keep working hard for what you want i'm gonna right, try we'll i'm gonna try to jump on that uh if, if it went a little slower i'd try to snowboard but i can't go yeah. 65 man. Well, that's, that's crazy. Snowboard, you let me know i might i may have a tip or two uh, all right, all right. Then, fair. Uh, all right. I, I know I know who to get advice from, and it ain't the guy right there. I tell you that. Hey, I'm. Hey, I try to tell everybody I'm Sal Masakela. I can help yeah. you out anything. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. He's weird. <laughs> hey, we appreciate you, man. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate it, all guys. Right. Thank you very much. Beyond the Fairway is presented by Genesis Motor America and the 2022 GV80. Luxurious design meets intuitive versatility. Make the game your own, Will. Nah, I was wondering how it was, that was going to look. That was didn't make the game. That was pretty solid. Make the, game. make the game your own. I tell you who makes the game their own, and that's Nick Baumgartner, man. I tell you, at 40 years old, like snowboard cross, which is like one of the cooler events in, in Winter Olympics, Will, it – it's never too late, man, to, to be who you want to be. That's, that's why we out here this week. Man. <laughs> that's why we out here we're chasing our dreams. That's it. Like, we out here chasing it. <laughs> Playing in tournaments, traveling. And... We're we chasing it. We're not running fast enough, obviously. No, we got we to gotta get on his recovery plan or something. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, the thing about it, I think Nick is the only one that's an Olympian that is successful in his craft that seemed like he's not slowing down. No, he doesn't. It, it, no. It, and it's almost like he has a new adventure. And and I th I know you think I was kidding and it, and it was a joke, but I am surprised that he plays golf because I really don't think golf is exciting or enough of a rush. Yeah, he's, he's a thrill seeker. Yeah, I mean, like if he was like, "Hey, I'm going base jumping tomorrow," I'd believe it. But him saying, "I'm going to go play golf tomorrow," it's kind of like, uh, yeah, yeah. Really? It, and and w one thing, 
one thing I like about the guy is I don't, I feel like I live vicariously through him because we both don't really have much of a structured life, it seems like. <laughs> no, no y'all don't have, no. We wake not up in the even, morning not even and we, we, we figure out what we're going to do next. What's, what's going to happen? You know, and there's some freedom in that. There is, there's a lot of freedom in that. It is, you're not bound by shit. <laughs> oh, is that a beep? Can we can we beep that one? No, he's gonna take it out. Oh, I'm okay. Put that in there. Yeah, there you right. go. All right, but yeah, yeah, he's not he's not bound by <laughs> shit. I've been waiting to curse in front of you for a minute. That's, that's good. <laughs> but uh, I, I do I do really appreciate the fact that um, that he, he 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 different beat of his own drum. And there's no quit. Yeah, I, I like that. There's no quit because let me tell you something. You beat you do anything for a number of years you're going to face some adversity yeah some trials tribulations some ups some downs some peaks and valleys but i think I've that I, been I, I think that shows significant or is that there's definitely a deep parallel uh connection to many tour players yeah absolutely no question like you gotta know, find sponsors man where are you gonna practice bro where are you gonna practice you hitting right we, we, we can't make a golf course in our backyard but <laughs> right but we can chip we can chip into a bucket in our backyard that's it which i was a king at I by hit, the way i hit flop shots over the fence to my neighbor's green that's what i do look see my neighbor got a green i don't but i got grass though will speaking of backyards and practices and grass mm. you are here in my living room we're in phoenix i don't live in scottsdale i live in phoenix remember that but damn it we still playing a golf course in your backyard that's fair that's fair so, who gonna bust who ass today? Is the real question. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you about my golf woes real quick. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I would be talking shit all the way until on um, Thursday. So the past year, I haven't played a professional round in in probably a year, a year and a half, okay. perhaps. And when I tell you, I've been hitting the ball so solid, so solid, because I haven't really cared. Mm. You know, really haven't stressed for the money. The minute I said I do to the tournament, to play this tournament, <laughs> I can't keep this golf ball on the range. So uh, I was talking a lot of shit, man, on uh, Wednesday night. But once I paid my money on Thursday, <laughs> bro, we can we can bet two dollars fifty cent. I'm all for that, you know. Will forgets that we've already bet a <laughs> uh, hundred dollars on I, this round today. I, I so did. I did. No reneging around here. Hey, be careful of your diction on that. It, Oh wait, it's reneg. I forgot Thank you. for our Caucasian. <laughs> God, who, who, who you think man, you just think he on podcast BET beyond the way. God <laughs> damn. Well I tell you what, I got as much work as I could do. I played with Andres Gonzalez, who's a is a wonderful, handsome man. And was his uh, mustache still it's just intact. Oof. Intact. Just just got it all the way down here with it. Just Really? It just mm, Look. Fu, Fu Man Chu. Man, he, he looks like he, he got the whole chew. He looks like he uh, his favorite song would be um, Janis Joplin in 1976. Uh, I'm gonna let you just have that. Oh, I don't man. know what the hell. That's for my white list. Anyway, I, but playing with Andres, I tell you what, I realize why I didn't make it because he don't miss. He don't miss. He don't miss. He, don't miss. he doesn't. But I did kind of like get some magic rubbed off of him. So I'm 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 pretty excited about today. My favorite course in the city, and we're gonna see. And so, well, y'all, but y'all gonna have to wait till next week when we tell you about how this all shook out. Because it could be magical or it could be absolutely embarrassing to be in back between the ropes. Tragic Johnson is about to happen, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> it's time now for Make the Game Your Own presented by Genesis. Now, we have, he's not my cousin. It's another guy who family member didn't know how to use E in the Lowry last name. Uh, yeah, I see that. Uh, this is Mark Lowry, who is no relation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He has he has a unique he has a unique uh foundation program, Doug. Yeah. And given the fact you've been in golf way longer than I have, mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on it? Well first Mark started the National Golf Player Development Foundation and is just aiming to provide financial support and services to young aspiring males and females people of color. Uh, to pursue their dreams in the game of golf, but from a player development standpoint, like what do you need? You know, clubs, access to the game. And, you know, I think it's re really needed because I feel like when we always look to organizations like the First Tee, I think First Tee is kind of that intro into golf. Um, but then what, when somebody gets the bug and they, they take that, that bite of the apple, right, in golf, um, I, I think the game sometimes lets, lets us down when you're trying to make that transition from, okay, I like this game, but now I want to play at a higher level. And, and that's the thing, you know, when you think about, uh, 
you know, going back to the, the National Golf Foundation, they have a statistic that at the introductory level, 17% of kids, African American specifically, mm. are interested in playing a game of golf at the introductory level. Mm. But when it comes to high school, AJGA, Junior Hurricane Tour, competitive golf, it falls down to less than 1.6%. 1, 1. Mm -hmm. So this program is needed. Yeah. It's absolutely needed. And one thing about it, he covers the whole gambit of, you know, um, helping you get to that next level in the game of golf. Because he's he has introduction, what right out of college to professional, mm -hmm. also have high school high school trying to get to college trying to get to college Absolutely. so he's doing from you know from womb to tomb you know i love to say that That's word right, right. <laughs> womb to and tomb gambit. You and gambit got that one in too also going to give mark kudos for the work that he's doing with the national golf player development foundation Favorite word whatever you need from us mark count us in your your cousin kind of sort of maybe thank you as always for joining will lowry and myself right here well this time in in the living room for beyond the fairway we actually have a tea time. It is 9.30. We tee off at 11.09. Or I do. What time do you tee off? I am catching the booty part of the uh, tea sheet. I got when. I'm the second last tea time. Oh, well. It'll be fun. Firm, crisp conditions here. TPC Scottsdale Champions Golf Course. But for us, Beyond the Fairway, we appreciate you rocking with us. Thank you, Genesis. I got to thank Genesis. You right? got to. I love the way I, how you cover. I feel covered. like I should have just had one to pull up to the course this weekend. So, hey, we don't need to talk about that. Speaking of Genesis, did you see my uh, Genesis Invitational uh, thing I did with PGA Original? I did see that. I'm glad yes. you brought it up. I meant yeah. to, but I forgot because hey, we've been moving. Yes, that was another Genesis. All the stuff we're doing for Genesis. Can you give a car? Give us a car. I mean, you got to be the... Was it VG80? That's why I ain't got a car. No G, kind of car. It's GV. GV. But it's okay. We're going to gonna get Will the, uh, the remedial one. We'll make him a 65. <laughs> you know what's funny? They're going to give us cars. You realize that, right? They're going to give us some, like micro machines. They're going to be like, you asked for a car. Here it is. You know what? You know what? Bro, I'm going to say this. I really like this setup. It's different. We, we need to get to Connecticut. On our road to Connecticut. All right. The grind. The, okay. <laughs> Hey, follow, listen, subscribe. You know where we at. Beyond the fairway, always. Will, Doug, what's happening? That sounds like an entry. Uh, that sounds like a, an intro. What's happening? Just say bye. Do what you want to say bye. Bye.